Well, greetings, Pastor Eric here from Zion Lutheran Church Youth Room. And we are on week 16. There's more to the story. This ends our time in the Old Testament. We've spent 16 weeks now in the Old Testament. Today I want to talk with you about the book of Nehemiah. I touched on that a little bit last week when Nehemiah rebuilt the walls. Yesterday, on Sunday, we talked about Ezra and the return and the starting of the rebuilding of the temple, the second temple, and then they kind of slip-slided away. Well, the time in the Babylonian captivity was a devastating time for the people of Israel, and after about 70 years or more, they started returning to Jerusalem in waves, like we heard about. Zerubbabel uh, led the first wave, Ezra led the second wave, and Nehemiah led the third wave. And under Zerubbabel and Ezra, the temple started to be rebuilt, but over the months and years, as we talked about yesterday, they just kind of quit. They just kind of turned their minds to something else. It was a cultural crisis because the history of their people, the Jewish people, was at a point of losing um, their whole traditions and rituals. Their teaching, their way of life was all in jeopardy. It was a very difficult time. Um, it, they, As they didn't care about the temple, it's kind of like, well, if my parents don't care about it, why should I? So. Um, it was a cultural and religious and personal crisis. Um, Nehemiah went back and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem that had protected the great city of Jerusalem had um, been destroyed after Zerubbabel and Nehemiah went back and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. So they were in tatters. and. Um, in a sense, the walls of Jerusalem protected what was so very important to them, the temple, their way of life, and everything. It was this wall that surrounded them and protected them. So think of things in our lives that are kind of like the walls, our walls, that protect us, that keep us safe, that um, keep us having a stability in life. Because... There, the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down, so everything was in tatters. And that's kind of what happens to people sometimes. Their life gets to be in tatters because what used to protect them was no longer there. There was just an erosion. There was a breaking down. There was a letting in of maybe sin or turning away from God or your spouse or your family, whatever that might be. Sometimes our walls of our lives get broken down, and Nehemiah went to rebuild those walls. Now, Nehemiah, actually, even though it's not one of the last books of the Bible, um, the way that the Bible is put together, because it's put together thematically, but not chronologically. One of the great things about this whole experience with the story this year is that we've been looking at things chronologically. And we're ending with Nehemiah. Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls about 444 BC, one of the last times in the Old Testament, even though his book doesn't appear. It appears about two thirds of the way through the Old Testament, but really it's one of the last books of the Bible. The if you look through Nehemiah, it's, it's 13 chapters, and if you look through the uh, story of Nehemiah, in the first six chapters, he rebuilds the walls of Jerusalem. He rebuilds the walls. In chapters 7 through 13, he rebuilds the people of Jerusalem. So rebuilding the walls, and then he rebuilt the people of Jerusalem. It's a fascinating story rebuilding the walls and reviving the people. That's what the book of Nehemiah is about. After everything's in tatters, the structure of the walls that surrounded their lives and temple needed to be rebuilt, and then the people needed to be revived. And what Nehemiah does in the first couple chapters of that book of the Bible is that he surveys the broken down walls. He prays for several days for God's wisdom and strategy 
to take on such a monumental task, then he starts to get the people of Jerusalem. There's walls, there's gates all around the walls of Jerusalem, different kinds of gates. And he figures that what I should do is get the people closest to the gate to rebuild the wall around that gate. Very strategic, simple thing, but he got the people who had most at stake at that portion of the wall to rebuild that wall. It was a family, um, family enterprise in a sense because families got together because they wanted them, they didn't travel across to the other part of the city to rebuild those walls, they rebuilt the walls right around their homes. All the while that they were working, Nehemiah kind of wandered around and he kept talking to him and he said, you know, he was a cheerleader. He says, you know, you're not doing this just for you. You are doing this for God. He reminded them that they were rebuilding the wall so that they, they could have a close relationship with God. And in 52 days, this is one of the most amazing feats in the Old Testament. We don't hear about Nehemiah that much. <clears throat> the entire walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt in 52 days, a monumental task, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. In chapter 7 starts the reorientation of the people. They started feeling safe, and in that safeness, kind of like us being out of the pandemic, we feel a little safer now. In that safeness in Jerusalem, they were starting to have a yearning in their hearts for a relationship with a living and loving God. So Nehemiah called them all together and thousands of them came. They asked Ezra to bring out the book of the law of Moses and um, it was the people's idea. They had been in captivity for 70, 80, 90, 70 years, they started returning over about 40, 50 years. So it was over a hundred years that they had not heard the word of God. So they called Ezra and Nehemiah to read the Torah, the story of creation from Moses through Noah and the flood, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, Esau, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Exodus, the Red Sea, they started hearing God's word of redemption and the people were revived just by hearing the story. They heard 